Have you ever wondered if you could do motion graphics on your iPad? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Hi, I'm Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator, and today we're here to do another Can It Design Challenge. Now, you might remember that a few months ago, I did a Can It Design Challenge that was recommended by one of you, and that was to see if we could use Kino animations to go into LumaFusion. Now, on that video, we received another comment for another challenge, and this was from Hourglass Entertainment. So shout out to Hourglass Entertainment for this idea. But Hourglass Entertainment asked if I had ever seen the app A Light Motion, which I had not. This is a motion graphics editor for the iPad, built specifically for the iPad. And so Hourglass Entertainment suggested that I try that and see if it would work for some motion graphics on the iPad. So I'm finally getting around to testing that out today. So let's go ahead, take a look, and see if a light motion on the iPad can do some motion graphic design. So let's go ahead. I haven't used it before, so we're just going to tap in and see what it does. I don't know if we have to sign up for an account or what we might have to do here. Like I said, I do think that this is a subscription-based software, so we'll have to see what we can do without a subscription and whether or not we can recommend it. So it looks like right off the bat we have some news, um, some tutorials to help us get started, release notes. The funny thing about this starting home interface is it looks a lot like a website, and I wonder if that's where it's pulling from. Okay, so there's tutorials, things to learn, that kind of thing. My assumption is that the plus button right here is going to be where we start a new project. But let's go ahead and open up the menu in the top left just to see first. Let's see, we can change our project sorting. Demo mode, okay, let's turn that on. Okay, that looks like four tutorials. Oh, show touches, that's what we want. That way you guys can see where I'm touching when I go from overhead back into screen recording view. Let's see. Show system fonts, we'll cancel that for now. Although we probably aren't going to be sharing this project, we'll just check it out. It looks like there's an about and sorting. That's pretty much it in the menu. So let's go ahead and let's try. We could watch some tutorials, but I figure you guys can do that on your own. Let's go ahead and try making a new project. Okay, so we have the options for project or element. And I don't know if an element's gonna be like a single thing or a pre-comp, something like that, but let's go ahead and let's try a project. We'll just go with 16 by nine in 1080, that's fine. Let's just see what the options are though. It looks like it goes up to 4K and frame rate, we'll stick with 30 frames per second for now, but it looks like you have basically all of those options that you could want for the 24 guys out there that has that option as well. Okay, we can choose our background. Light gray is probably fine for now. Looks like we can name it. Just call it test. And create project. Thing I don't like about that create project button is it doesn't look much like a button. Let's go ahead and I think first thing we're going to try and do is just see if we can make a subscribe animation. That's what we did before with Keynote. So let's see if we can do the same thing here. Let's start with a circle and see if we can get that to bounce in. I thought this was a color, but it looks like it's a tag. Okay, so we're on the info, border and a shadow. Turn on the border, change some of the things about it. Give it a shadow, size, decrease size. Transparency and the position of it. So there's both an X and a Y position. All right. Okay, here's our color and fill. We'll change it to red. And we've got color and fill, gradient, and fill with media. And we have blending and opacity options. Blending modes, looks like we still have. The border is still showing up and I don't know why. Okay, it's just showing that it's selected. That was a little bit confusing, but I'll keep going here. Okay, effects. Let's see what happens when we click add an effect. So there's a bunch of effects here. 
A lot of things that we would expect, chroma key, exposure, options for blurring, coloring and lighting. I'm not seeing my taps show up, so I'm not sure what good it did to turn on the taps. Okay, sorry about that. I had to pause for a second while my neighbors were making a bunch of noise. So hopefully this recording is not too bad, but we are here on the move and transform now. And I think this is where we can actually start to keyframe things and see what happens. So let's set a keyframe one second in. And it looks like this timeline is by default two seconds for the circle. So let's go ahead, so we'll set a keyframe, come back here, and we'll set another keyframe. Hoping we can just swipe on the Y here, no. So like we have to drag the circle around. Try and undo that. No two finger tap to undo. Looks like if we tap the button though, we can undo it. No way to keep in alignment. Select on that again, move and transform. Okay, there we go. So down in this, there's this swipe area, swipe to move. Okay, great. So let's just drag this all the way up and let's play and watch it fall. Okay. So we can bring that in and obviously we're going to want it to bounce a little before it settles. It looks like we have easing here. But it doesn't look like we can select it on this. I'm not sure why. Should be able to see the curve, I would think. Oh, okay, so we need to be back here so we can see the curve. And what we want is to ease both of them. Okay, now let's watch it through. Looks like we can adjust the ease. Okay, and I'm seeing that these buttons down here say try. So I'm guessing those are premium features that if we don't pay for them, we can't use. Yes. Okay, so we won't be able to export, but let's try it. So it's a bouncing. And that's a staggering option. There's random bounce, there's cyclical bounce, Elastic bounce and just bounce. Okay, elastic is probably what we're looking for here. Okay, so we will stick with that for now. So there's a few different options you can use. This is a trial, so we won't be able to export this because we haven't paid for it, but we at least kind of know what our options are as far as applying motion to this goes. And you can see up here, it's now showing me that exporting is locked because I haven't paid. Okay, let's see. Um, I don't know what the payment options are, so we'll look at that in a second. Okay, so we've got movement, we've got rotation, we've got sizing, and shear. Okay, so we will want to apply some stretch to that as it comes down and then some compression when it hits. So. Let's try that now. So there's lock or unlock that, and we want to go ahead and stretch that out as it falls. Then when it hits, we want it to compress. to 
stretch back out as it goes back up. And as it settles, we want it to go back to round. This is just a test here. We'll see how it does. Okay, that's not really bad. We could massage that and make it better, but certainly that works. And so there's a bunch of different things you can mess with here along your way. Now let's go ahead and see if we can morph this into the subscribe. So let's go ahead and find out how we add another shape. The rounded rectangle. If again, that's not color, that's the tag. Want those to overlap a little bit. Let's change the color. I don't know if there's an option to copy attributes. I'll try to hold down on it. I don't see an option to copy attributes from it. Let's see info, convert to outline. just project settings there. So we would probably just have to go through and apply this. Okay, so let's watch that through. Bounces down, grows out. Okay, we could work on the positioning of that, but I won't waste too much of your time here as we look at this. The next thing that we need is to add in subscribe right at the same time. So let's add in text. Center it. white and we're going to want it to follow the same motion as this so I really want some way of copying this there's probably a way to do it I just don't think I know it okay so that must be the light motion there if we remove it it probably tells us we need to pay for it okay here we're going to see $28.99 a year for purchase. That looks like it. You can either do a monthly or a yearly subscription to get access to the premium features and to remove the watermark and ads. So it looks like there's only a subscription option as far as I can tell here. There is not an option to just go ahead and buy the program outright, which is really what we're looking for in a program. We don't have that here. I don't see a way to copy. I could just be missing it. If anybody knows how, go ahead and drop in the comments and tell us how to copy motion from one thing to another. But right now we're just going to need to go ahead and try to set it manually. So let's go ahead and move, to, move and transform. Does not look like we can keyframe the text size. So we'll have to try transforming it. Set a keyframe here. Drag back to the start. And right here, new keyframe, make it big. Let's watch the whole thing. Bounce, subscribe. So we can definitely make a subscribe animation here. It looks like that's a little bit off from where it should be. Okay, so pretty easy enough to figure out we were able to make that pretty quick now obviously there's lots and lots of other things that you could do here i think you can keyframe color you can keyframe your blend mode there's a lot that you can do within this program motion graphics wise 
There's definitely plenty that could be done. And I'm impressed with how easy it was to pick up. It wasn't really difficult to find things. It took a little bit here and there, but I think if you know your way around some motion graphics, it would be pretty easy. Now, of course, when I click this export, it's going to tell me I can't do that. And then it would give me the same membership options, I think, as we had before. Yeah. So there you have it. A light motion can design. Thanks so much to Hourglass Entertainment for suggesting this video. Now, you might not want to pay the subscription for it, or if you are going to go the subscription route, you might decide you're better off just using a computer in After Effects. But if you are trying to do motion graphic design on your iPad, then it looks like this is one of the main options that's out there. You can pay for a few exports on your own, but of course you won't get access to the pro features. So you might need to subscribe if that's the route that you want to go. I don't think I'll be subscribing. You guys know I don't like subscriptions. I think most of what I need to do, I can do inside of LumaFusion. Hopefully LumaFusion will be adding some more options as we go along. If you do need to learn LumaFusion, you can go ahead and drop into the description and look at my courses on LumaFusion. I have a whole one on title design. It goes over a lot of the keyframing basics that you need to know to do any kind of motion design inside of LumaFusion. It's not very full featured yet, but hopefully more of that will be coming and it will come with just a single purchase license the way LumaFusion always has been instead of a subscription license. Now I want to hear from you. Have you tried a light motion? Go ahead, drop in the comments. Tell us if you have, what you think about it. Or if you know another motion graphics editor on the iPad, tell us about that too. And if you have any ideas for future design challenges for the Canon Design Series, go ahead and put those in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.